We got a 76 year old female with an atrial flutter one month ago. She was cardioverted in a normal sinus rhythm. Yay. She reports palpitations again. Oh no. Is fatigued and cannot exercise. And the ECG today, she's back in the flutter. Okay. Her past medical includes hypertension, HEFPEF, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. She's on a Pixaban, metoprolol, lisinopril, metformin, resuvastatin. The physical, you note an irregular pulse. Uh, the echo post cardioversion about a month ago showed an EF of 55% left atrial dilatation and diastolic dysfunction. So the question is now, so she's basically been cardioverted once, she's back in it, and she's not feeling great. What do you want to do? Catheter, cardiovert her again, refer her for catheter ablation, or just do nothing. Now, generally for the boards, just FYI, if you've got someone that's really, really symptomatic, do nothing is not going to be the right answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, so most of you um, have got that. So obviously, you know, do nothing and cardiac catheterization are distractors there. Um, the question is, uh, most of you got the ca catheter ablation. The question was, well, what about cardioverting again? Most of these individuals, especially if they have echo abnormalities, like a dilated LV and diastolic dysfunction, you cardiovert them, she'll be back again in a month, okay? So the boards want you, essentially this is, you try, always try people with a cardioversion once. You know, most of my patients will give them a one cardioversion, but if they've got uh, structural heart disease and they go back into it, generally it's time to think about other things. And catheter ablation is the one to think about with them. So, we're talking about typical or type 1 atrial flutter in most of these individuals. So, the atria is going wrong at about a, um, 300 beats per minute. And the ventricles, you know, it's a tachycardia. So, generally, they're going to be at, you know, uncontrolled 100 to 150. Now, what this type 1 is, it is a counterclockwise circuit in the right atrium. So, it's going around like this about three or four times per second. So, the inferior leads, you know, the ones down the legs, what they're going to see is half the time they're going to see a uh, wave coming toward them, and then half the time it's going to be going away from them. Remember, a positive toward a positive causes an upstroke on the ECG. So the inferior leads in particular, you're going to see this upstroke, and then this, when it goes away, downstroke. So the inferior leads in particular are really, really good places to look for for um, a flutter. And if you get two to one, at a rate of 150, a ventricular rate around 150, it's basically atrial flutter until proven otherwise, if it's an SVT. You can try to slow them down and get them to go to 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 by doing vagal uh, or, you know, giving uh, AB nodal blockers. The main thing with A flutter is just think now, from now on, I want you to think of A flutter and A flib. Uh, a fib is just one, one big kind of blur, okay? I mean, when we've done halters, I can tell you so many people with flutter go into fib and so many people with fib go into flutter that literally there are, there's many of the risk factors are uh, similar you know big atrium diastolic dysfunction poorly controlled blood pressure etc so think of them as afib from that respect so you should um think about them also the same way that is rate control and then anticoagulation all right so in terms of someone who is acutely unstable blast them Okay, so zap them, or uh, you can use pharmacological if they're hemodynamically stable. So one of the ones they sometimes use is ibutilide or dofetilide, and then get them on their meds. So, you know, with her, she was cardioverted and went on her meds, but now she's back in it. So if they're symptomatic despite meds, so she's basically failed therapy, then we should refer her for catheter ablation. And it's 95% successful. So what they do in this catheter ablation is they put them in a flutter and they actually find that circuit, that uh, cavo tricuspidismus dependent circuit, and they burn or freeze like three or four, almost like fire breaks over that circuit. And so now the circuit can't start and it's very successful. So this is a great therapy uh, that is used if they have failed. Now, FIB, it also involves circuits, but there are circuits going on all over the place in both atria, these little circuits. And they, when they go, go off each of these circuits, they do cause wavelets and you can see them. Sometimes you can see them, you know, other times it's just kind of like this undulation here, but sometimes you can actually see them. 
and they're called F waves because they're totally effed up. Actually, no, they're fibrillatory. <laughs> Just seeing that you're still awake, good. 